eligibility <laughs> is expired. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, okay. we, we won't have a lot of alumni on the team. But <laughs> we, 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 how we popular is rugby in the United States? You hear about it in other countries, not so much here in the United States. How, how big of a sport is this? As here? far as the United States, I mean, Kurt can obviously get the right numbers for you because I like to make half of them up. But the point <laughs> is, when you're looking at it, uh, we're the fastest this growing many? sport. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fastest growing sport in America. We're fastest growing in almost every demographic really? except one within the state of Iowa. We're the fastest growing state in the country based on percentage growth. We had 26 kids playing rugby in 2010. We now have, a whole, we now have over 30 teams of boys players. We have over eight teams of girls players, and we actually have, we could have up to 12 this fall. We have every school in the metro besides Johnston and North. We're fixing the North problem because we'll have a team there next year. Excellent. Johnston, we're still looking for people. So anyone wants to play in Johnston? <laughs> and no, is, that, is that mainly the problem? Is, is they have players that, that want to participate in the sport? The way we set it up and the way that Kurt is youth director for uh, USA Rugby has sort of given us guidance to every one of our teams is a school team. We follow all procedures within the school. We actually, what we're trying to do is not create a club that's outside and takes money right. out of the community. We want to make sure anyone that's been, you know, has, has a way to represent their school proudly. I think that's something as Iowans has always been very important to our fabric, which is we are raised to represent our community through our schools. That's the ethos of our program. That's why we're actually growing so fast. All right, Kurt, yeah. we need to explain the rules. I'm sorry. Yeah, Jason. I was going to say, yeah. asking the what same exactly thing. Is Tell us how this different. This is the opposite of Tom Brady's balls because it's really overinflated. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ron Card. But explain how this looks like a regular football. It's mm -hmm. a little more plump than a regular football. What's the difference between this and what everybody's used to in regular football? Sure. So rugby actually came from soccer. Um, it, it was when somebody was playing soccer, got bored, picked up the ball, and began to run with it. It's <laughs> the story we like to tell. Uh, but the rules have then morphed through the years. It's, they say it started in 1823, so it's a nice old sport. Uh, it's basically like a free-flowing game. It's going to be a pass-catch score kind of game. A free-for-all, is that what you mean to say? Free-flowing, <laughs> free-flowing. Believe it or not, although when you watch it, you may not understand them, there are lots of rules that go around the game. Um, American football came from rugby, and so through a series of rule changes, the, the line of scrimmage came from the scrum. And so then the ball gets, t you know, it's a touchdown in football. You actually have to touch the ball down to score in rugby. So there's a lot of similarities there you're going to see. But everybody carries the ball. All players in the field get to pass, catch, and score. And so it's one of those fun games you're going to watch. The action on the games on the weekend, it's a seven-on-seven -seven version of the game. It's fast. It's scoring. It's only 15-minute games, so you get a new game every 15 wow, minutes. 15 minutes? Yep. So and you're so seven minute halves, Seven-minute halves with a one-minute intermission, and all of a sudden then the next game comes on up after that. So it's, wow. it's a wonderful activity to be able to see lots of rugby, different players, different teams, and then of course we're going to have a little bit of activity for the kids on the day to be able to come out and try it out if they'd like to. Okay, I want to go back to the game because sure. you guys play this game, but you yeah. don't have all the pads on that you see in the NFL. No, and, and you know you get the question of course about, about safety, and there's going to be a little bit of the bangs and bruises, but by and large we are, um, we are a very safe sport. We're on, uh, we're on par with soccer actually, with our injury rates. And so it's something that is, when you look at it, of course, we get the questions, which are, is it safe for my kid or for me to play? And the answer, of course, is yes. There's going to be some, like I said, some small minor injuries here and there, just like anything, but we are a safe sport. I had a lot of friends at Iowa who played rugby. And what I remember is there was always a keg on the sideline and that one, the big guys <laughs> would duct tape, duct tape their ears to their head. Does that still happen? <laughs> so the keg is gone. Um, we, are, we, are, we, we are, like Chris is saying, we're really moving into schools. We're moving into right. schools at the collegiate level. Um, we are, we're getting more varsity programs every year at the collegiate level offering scholarships. Now it's a keg of Powerade. Yeah. Exactly, okay. exactly. And you know what, our, our athletes are athletes. They're taking care of themselves. They're in the gyms. They're getting, you know, on nutrition programs. Our Olympic teams just qualified for the Olympics and we, I mean, we couldn't be more excited. So it, it is changing that way. Of course, the social and fun atmosphere is still there. You're still going to enjoy yourself when you're playing rugby. Um, and of course, rugby is for men and for women as well. So if we can get you out on the field at some point, we'd love to try Jackie. it. Jackie? My wife played it. I, look how big, <laughs> see how big this ball is? Look how, how small my bit, hands yeah. are. I would have, I would, this, oof. So Jackie, we've got the, this is the one that we use for kids in schools to okay, just train yeah, them yeah, up. Okay, yeah, give me the so, one yeah, for it's, kids. It's, okay, uh, that one I can Just to start off. Just to start off. I have very, very small hands, so I would have to use the kids. So ball. what is the gist of the game? If we can't, we, we have, we've got a little time here. But what is the gist of the game? Do you take the ball and lay it in the middle or what do you have to do? Don't you so, like yeah. in a circle and go like this? So, yes, all of those things are correct. Okay, so um, how, how does the game so, start? Um, think, of, think, think of the flow. The ball's going to be kicked off just like you're going to see in football. When okay. the ball's caught and after the first tackle, it doesn't stop. And so when the tackle happens, that's not the end of something where you're going to reset and go again. That's just the beginning. And so the tackle happens, the ball gets put, picked up and keep going. 
And so you're going to pass now, it down to your does, teammates. Does a referee come over, an official come over and grab the ball and lay it down? So rugby's unique. We don't have rules, we have laws. You don't have rules. And okay, so the I referee like actually adjudicates the laws of the game instead of calling every single little thing that might happen. There's going to be a lot of things that might happen that are technically going to be against a rule. But the referee is going to say, was it impactful or not? We're just going to keep the game flowing. Because the goal is, referee is a facilitator, not somebody to come in and just call everything that went wrong. And so they want to keep the game flowing. The players want to play a lot. The fans want to watch a lot. And so the action on Saturday, out of a out of a seven-minute half, you're probably going to see six minutes and probably 30 seconds of action. All right, so you get the ball, you run the ball, you tackle. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then what happens after you get tackled? You have to regroup? After you get tackled, you go to the ground. You have to release the ball. Your teammates will come in, pick it up, pass it to the next guys, and you keep going again. So when does what initiates I think you have a, to see it to yeah. get it. What yeah. initiates a scrum? So scrum, you can't you can't fumble the ball forward, and that's one of those things that's a little bit little bit different about our sport. But when you fumble the ball forward, you're not allowed to do that, and the ball is not allowed to be passed forward or fumbled forward. So there's no down the field long bomb passes. Right. It's all going to be running in, in laterals. Mm -hmm. So if the ball does go forward off your hands, or if you pass it forward, the referee's going to stop it and he's going to award a scrum. And this is the fun part, of course. We all we all bind up together. Mm -hmm. Lou, we're going to get in there. Yeah. We're going to bind up, and we're going to then go we're against rock. the team across from us. Ball gets rolled in the middle, and it's basically like a jump ball with your feet. And so then they hook it back with their feet to their own team. Whichever team hooks it back, they get to pick it up and keep playing. I didn't know you had to use your feet. So it really is from the roots cool. of soccer. Then. It is. And so um, a, a rugby coach actually uh, invented basketball. And so football came from rugby. Rugby came from soccer. It's all interrelated. Cool. That is really cool. All right. So tell us, give us the particulars of where people can see all this action. Yep. So check out the action. <coughs> oh, apologies. Check out the action at County Soccer Complex. First kickoff every day on Saturday and Sunday is at 8 a.m. Uh, all details about the event are at rugbydsm.org. Uh, come out, it's $8 to come through the gate, $5 to park. But again, we have a few passes here yes. to be able to give away. We have passes that were given away, <laughs> folks, to go to our Great Day Facebook page right now. These are your all-access passes. Plus, they just look really cool to wear around your neck. Yeah. Uh, all-access passes includes free parking. You can get those right now by going to our Great Day Facebook page. This is a great event going on. Don't miss it. And you mentioned there's something special for the kids or Olympic days if there is so the Olympic Day um, the US Olympic Committee awards Olympic days to activities like this and, and Chris and his local team have done an amazing job of growing the local game at the high schools the next step they're taking is getting into the the younger ones middle school ages and there's outreach all week long around this Olympic Day we're visiting schools YMCA's boys and girls clubs teach them the rugby teach them the basics of it it's non-contact at that point we play with you know flags or tags mm -hmm. okay they then get to come out on Saturday, play a little bit themselves, and try it out. And of course, the next step is the leagues that they have here locally in Iowa, they can actually sign up and play. That is cool. awesome. So on, on the so calendar, you can find all those locations for those outreaches. Today, we're going to be at the Waukee YMCA. Uh, we're mm -hmm. going to be at the Boys and Girls Clubs all day Friday, Ankeny YMCA on Thursday. On Friday morning, uh, we're going to be at another YMCA, and I apologize, just blanked on that, that one. Please you have go a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, go to the calendar on rugbydsm.org. Mm -hmm. Anyone can come out to those events, and anyone who comes out to is able to get in free with a parent or guardian on the day uh, and come out and play again at 1040 and 140. We're going to have a demo situation as part of Olympic Day for them to get on the field in front of everyone else. I mean, we're hoping for over 2,500 coming out to wow. this. Awesome. Chris Draper, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.